what the cancelled Sinister Six movie would look like. In fact, among all five Spider-Man productions, the two of The Amazing Spider-Man are really the weakest, either by story or direction. But believing that the second film could finally bring an incredible return to the franchise, Sony Pictures began developing The Amazing Spider-Man 3 while the second was still in post-production. However, with the poor results at the box office and with an unpleasant quality, both the third film and The Sinister Six were put in the drawer. The feature of the group of villains even went back into planning, but it was finally finalized with the partnership between Sony and Marvel Studios. Thus, in conversation with the Dean of Geek, Mark Webb, who directed the second franchise of The Hero, commented on what the backstage was like at the time about the third film and the production that would bring together the iconic Spider-Man villains. Yes, we talked about the Sinister Six. They would play Sinister Six before the spectacular Spider-Man 3. Chris Cooper would return to play the Goblin. We were going to freeze his head, then he would be brought back to life. And then there was that character, called the Gentleman. We had some notions about how to do it but I think maybe we were thinking too ahead when we started building these things. But it was a fun exercise. I look back on those days with great fondness. Years ago, Webb had already confirmed two other villains for the spin-off film, Hunter and Mysterio. The infamous group of villains had already been introduced at the end of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus and Rhino should also be part of the group that, instead of being portrayed as villains, will seek redemption throughout the plot, according to producer Avi Arad. A solo Venom movie and another focused on a superheroine from the Spider-Man universe will be the next derivatives of the franchise. Drew Goddard also commented on the cancelled movie, he spoke a little about it. For me, making the film is a special part. Then comes the business part. I would really like people to see this movie, but right now, I don't know if it's going to happen. You know, I love the Sinister Six script, I love the people who worked with me. I would really like to do that movie someday, it's so much fun. But now you can't tell if it's going to happen. I had to write it, I still need to do it, they can't take that away from me, man. Goddard declined to reveal which villains would be in the Sinister Six, but he explained that the final minutes of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 would matter little to the movie. I wanted this movie to stand on its own. I feel that, in general, I'm tired of these movies that become a puzzle for people to solve. I just want to have fun. It's a good point of view, but it shows that Sony had a problem with the plans of the films, after all, there is no point in forming a universe if the films are meant to be independent. Finally, it looks like we wouldn't have a two-hour movie with the webhead fighting six villains. When you're making a superhero movie, you don't need multiple villains. The focus is a guy. I think Sinister Six is different. For me, it's less about multiple villains and more about multiple antagonists, and that's different. You never say that The Dirty Dozen is a movie with many characters. They're all villains, but they're all protagonists. The trick with the Sinister Six is that I was making everyone the protagonist and then we wouldn't have as many six-on-one battles. This was the idea.